everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Peter Planter, and for today's video, I'm going to talk about a requested video about what do you see? Like, you know, you know, you know, plants. <laughs> Today, I'm going to talk about variegations on plants, variegations, colors, patterns, um, how to keep up with variegations, how to maintain variegations, and how to maintain colors for plants that are in your collection. So, let's get started. So, first of all, when you say variegations, variegations can differ from um, different colors. Well, as we all know, if you are a plant parent or a plant owner, variegations are like those white patterns that makes a specific plant um, different than the others. Like for example, this Scheffler umbrella plant. Um, it's very heavy. Let me move this spathophyllum. So variegations are like these. It makes the plant very different and very unique from the others. And also it makes a very big controversy in the plant industry or plant community because um, if like some people really think that really think that variegations make the plant very expensive or rare or some kind of like that. But no, it doesn't. Let's start with how to maintain variegations. For me, there's two ways how to maintain variegations. First is the, through light and the second is through cutting. Uh, so first we're going to talk about the light. So variegated plants doesn't have enough chlorophyll to help them photosynthesize and produce energy for the plant, which means that they need more sun. And when they need more sun, it means they need more light. Does it make sense? <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so they need more light to survive. So when a variegated plant is placed in a very low light than the usual they would produce more green leaves which would be the purpose of variegated plants right so if you want to maintain your variegation on a specific plant you have to make sure that you have to provide your plant very the the specific amount of light or just say the enough amount of light that would help the plant produce the enough energy for it's like for them to to continue living. I have a perfect example for a plant that has been de de deprived, <laughs> that has been deprived from the enough sunlight that it needs to have. So first we have this Spadiphyllum peacefully variegata. I got this one uh, three years ago, two years ago. It was a very small plant, and it had more white leaves. But now if you can see this. Um, when I got this, I bought, this was one of the first few leaves that I had. Uh -huh. And then as time went by, it was in the, in the boarding house and of course my boarding house doesn't have enough light. So it was deprived from in the enough sunlight that it needs to have and it produced like it faded away. The variegation faded away so it went like from white variegation to faded and then there was a time when it, it produced pure green leaf this one okay that that happens when you're that happens to your plant when you don't provide them with enough sunlight especially to variegated plants they would revert back to its normal green color they would revert back to its natural or original green color or green form to produce more energy for the plant to live so if you don't want that to happen then you have to place them uh, in more like brighter sunlight but not direct sunlight because um, they would actually burn so I've transferred this one to a place where it receives more 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 bright light and so far after two weeks of putting it there I it has put out this variegation not much yet, but it is reverting back to its variegated self. And now the new leaf right here, if you can see that, if I can let you see, that one right there is already white. So that happens. You can actually help your plant um, regain back its variegation. Just put them in brighter shade, uh, bright, just put them in a brighter light, then they would push out variegated 
more variegated leaves. As for my Shiflera umbrella plant, it does not really do better. It does not do well in very low light. I, 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 I noticed that when it was placed in my boarding house with very low light, it was dropping so much leaves and um, it just didn't like it. But then when I placed it here at home with so much light, like very bright light, then it really loved it here. And it was, it has been growing a lot since. Um, I think it's bending towards the light, but yeah, it's very good. For this one, uh, Daphin Bakia, I do not really remember what specific name of Daphin what specific type of Daphin Bakia this is or dumb cane. So this specific dumb cane um, has its patterns on the inner side of the leaf which really is a statement, it, it creates a statement. Um, they do stand out in, a, in my collection like when you see an entire green, the like entire ocean of green and then you see this white pattern then it's really amazing. If you have, if you're a plant collector, Pothos is a very basic plant for, it's just like a starter plant for everyone. It's very easy and it's very forgiving to new plant owners. So if you're a plant owner and you're watching this video, I really, really, really suggest you to buy a Pothos. This one is an, this one is a Neon Pothos, a variegated Neon Pothos. Um, I had a regular Neon Pothos. But not the variegated one but this one seems to be the variegated one um i'm really happy to have to really see its variegation same as the others these guys would revert back to the non-variegated the non-variegated version of itself when depleted with the enough sunlight um i have the other variegated type of photos outside it's climbing on a pole and i can't bring it because it's very heavy um, it, its variegation is more of the green, like the darker green. This one has the variegation on its like, this one has a lighter variegation, like a whiter var variegation, but the other plant that I have, its mother plant has like the deeper green variegation instead of the white one. So next is my Burl Marks Variegata. Um, if you can see, <laughs> where is the Variegata right there? You can see any variegations right there. That's right, I, yeah, I, there's only two leaf of variegations right there and the rest is the green form. And I don't understand why there's roots under and I know this isn't root bound yet because I can still move the pot around. I have been having a lot of anxiety with this one. I paid a lot for this because it's a Burl Marks Variegata and Burl Marks Variegata is expensive. Yeah, quite expensive than the Burl Marks, the regular Burl Marks. This would lead to the next, um, to the next, what do you call this? To the next possible way you can maintain your variegations is to cut your plants. Um, this is one way that I've learned from the internet and from the plant community, especially from Plantarina, from Harley G, from who else? Kaylee Ellen. And you're variegated plant. Let's say for example a variegated Burl Marks philodendron um, reverts back to its original green form then you can just cut it the new growth would be variegated or the new growth would have like 98% chance to be variegated again. So I'm just waiting for this guy to grow a little bit taller and then once it gets a little taller then I would definitely cut this guy cut this Burl Marks variegata so that I would have more leaves like that because Burl Marks Variegata is expensive. So that's what you do. Another example for cutting for like the second method is my Philodendron Pink Princess, uh, which is a very poor, in a very poor state right now. Don't mind it. Oh my gosh, I'm a very bad Pink Princess parent. So this one is a philodendron pink princess in a mug so if you can see my philodendron pink princess doesn't have a lot of pinks and what happened right here this was supposed to be a very pink leaf 90 percent pink but my impatient self wasn't able to wait 
and well actually it was also the cost of low humidity it was um the, the new leaf was stuck inside the like this i forgot the term that kaylee ellen said this like sheet right here it was stuck right there so i was really bothered and i was seeing a new leaf right here this one so i was really bothered like i was i was, I was thinking that why sh why couldn't i help so why not why not help so i tried to split it open and then when i pulled it out i actually snapped the leaf off and when i looked at the leaf it was 90 percent pink so yeah this is one way so this is also one way so that you would have more variations on your pink princess philodendron in case you don't have like your pink princess philodendron doesn't always doesn't produce enough variegations it also can happen when your pink princess philodendron produces a lot of white then you have to cut it because eventually your plant will die and and that would actually cause the plant to either produce more green or to either balance out their variegations from the greens the green leaves basically you cannot have like a pure white variegated leaf because it would eventually die i've seen a lot of pictures online where it's like 99 percent white and then this is just had bit of green and it's really amazing it's really beautiful but the sad part is when you have a lot when you have a very variegated leaf a fully variegated leaf it would die off very fast or it would just burn so lastly for this video i'm going to talk about one of my favorite agronemas that i have in my collection um i have yet to buy more agronemas but currently i am still saving because you know why so this um, aglonema osaka i've searched if this is really the osaka one um this one is also one of my favorite speckled variation uh, i don't know if you can see this one is very pretty and it had recently shot out new a new stock right here and I'm really excited because I want it to have more stocks that's how you gain back your variegation for your variegated plants especially for those who need more light or for those who are still starting with variegated plants I hope this helped you um, one thing you have to remember plant being a plant parent or being a plant tito is a trial and error um, I've killed a lot of plants in the past. I've killed a lot of Dathan Bacchus before I got this right. Um, I've killed one Spatipylum. And I didn't kill any of those. So yeah, don't worry if you kill a plant. Don't worry if you accidentally overwatered your plant because you can charge it in your experience. I hope this video helped you. And if ever you're having trouble, I hope this video helped you as well. Um, and for those who are starting their plant journey because of ECQ and because of this quarantine thing that's lasting forever here in the Philippines because of some issues that we have right here. I hope you're doing well and I hope you're enjoying your plants. And yes, let's take care of more plants. Let's own more plants. Let's buy more plants. Let's barter more plants because it's one way for us to lose our negativity in life and also to save our planet. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to this channel, it's Peter Planter. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if it helped you. Don't forget to share as well to help your other friends who are starting your plant business or starting your plant hobby. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!